Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Well, Mr. Steed, so you wish to escape. But forgive me, what are you escaping from? I don't recall your notorious exploits. I haven't been found out yet, uh, Mr... Uh, Tyson, Waldo Tyson. You have foresight, Mr. Steed. Oh, I have far more than that. I have diamonds. You can arrange my escape from a very awkward situation. Permanently. Oh, yes. You see, I can send you back in time to any century you wish, any era you decide upon. Would you care for a small demonstration, Mr. Steed? If so, then please step this way. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 3 of this story, in which Emma Peel heads for danger, and John Steed experiences his first... Escape in Time. John Steed had successfully followed the escape routes taken by various other wanted men. It had taken him from a barber's shop into an eastern gallery run by a very beautiful Asiatic girl called Anjali. She had insisted that he be blindfolded before handing him on to a chauffeur called Manners, who had driven him down into the country. He was received in a large 16th century house by Waldo Tyson, a man who claimed to be able to transport people in time. If Steve looked and sounded rather sceptical, it was because that's exactly how he felt. Yes, they're all sceptical at first, that's why I insist on the trial run, as it were. But first, um, tell me how you heard of us, Mr. Steed. Oh, through a um, friend of a friend of a friend. I see. Of course, you know our terms. Fifty percent of what I've acquired. The diamonds. Mm, yes, sir. You see, my problem is immediate. Then we will deal with it immediately. Mine is a unique service, Mr. Steed. And one that has been utilized by many before you. Bleshner, Joubert, Bibi Jin, Colonel Jacino. Ah, yes. He disappeared quite recently, didn't he? Uh, reports say he's in Canada. Reports are quite wrong. Colonel Jacino wished to remain in this country, but not to live in the present. But he can come back in the future? Oh, no. He'll never be here again. He chose the turn of the century, you see. He is now living in 1904. Oh, I suppose that'll be safe enough. Of course. Where better to hide than in the past? It's a place where authority may never pursue you. That's incredible. If it can be done. <laughs> I can see that you will never be convinced until you have experienced it, like all the others. What period of time would you like, Mr. Steed? Well, I've always had a hankering for the 18th century. Gerd Zooks and Stepney Vitals and all that jazz. Uh, where do I arrive? Waterloo? Uh, you will be travelling through time, but not distance. You will arrive at your point of departure. This house, in the year 1790. This house? Yes, it's been in my family since the 15th century. Oh, then I shall run into your forebears. Yes, 1790. Samuel Tyson was alive then, a philanderer by repute, a great one for the ladies. Sounds encouraging. And uh, how about the others? I see you've got many family portraits and several busts on plinth. Yes, and um, that's Bruno. He was a great sportsman. Edwin, a duelist. Uh, oh, that's Herbert, squire of four counties. Uh, how about this chap, uh... Looks rather forbidding. Ah, that's Matthew Tyson. He was the black sheep, an inquisitor, a, a torturer. It is said that he invented the rack. Hmm. Well, I think I shall prefer Samuel the Philandra much more in my line. All right. Uh, are you ready to find out? Well, as ready as I shall ever be, I suppose. Right. Then I will set the machinery in motion. Tyson walked over to a panel in the wall and touched a button. The whole wall slid away. 
In the recess was what looked like an enormous computer. Tyson made several adjustments. Ready, Mr. Steed? Enter the time tunnel uh, through that door over there. Well, just walk into it, just like that. Just as though you were entering another room. But don't be afraid. You'll come to no harm. I will be in complete control. Now, you may experience a little dizziness at first. That's just the centrifugal force. Uh, don't worry. Let yourself succumb to any form of drowsiness. It won't harm you. Ready? Yes, ready. Then, bon voyage. John Steed found himself in a tunnel, the walls of which seemed to start to spin around him. Lights flashed overhead. Steed began to feel dizzy. He staggered forward. It was as though he was walking into a mist, walking very unsteadily on air. The sounds around him increased to a crescendo. And then... He remembered no more until he opened his eyes and found himself in a room filled with period furniture. Well, it's Georgian, all right. It looks lived in. A window. Steed walked to the window and drew aside the heavy lace curtains. There was a fine view of the English countryside. A coach and horse clattered up. Samuel the Philanderer, by repute. With a girl on either side. There was the sound of girlish laughter from behind a door. Steed moved over and listened. Steed moved off and opened the main door. He found himself back in the time corridor. Again, the same experience, the swirling walls, the lights, the gradual increase of sound, until, walking through the mist once again, Steed fought to regain his senses. Welcome back, Mr. Steed. You look a little bewildered. Yes, you are back in my rooms and back in the present century. I take it that you have no further doubts now. Well, what happens now? That is up to you. You may, if you wish, purchase a one-way ticket to the past, and your troubles of the present are over. The price? Well, uh, you said you had diamonds. I am inordinately fond of diamonds. I can't put my hands on them right away. Oh, but we can give you time, Mr. Steed. After all, time is our speciality. You must make your final preparations. We will be contacting you in a day or two. Um, I'm afraid you will have to leave as you arrive, blindfolded. Forgive me, but it's our precautions against, against the... Against unwelcome intruders, I, I quite understand. I consent, of course, that I await your instructions. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Any time, Mr. Steed. Any time. <laughs> While all this was going on, Mrs. Peel was getting impatient. She'd not heard from Steed and had nothing to report to Mother. She wanted to try the escape route herself, but she could hardly call at the barber's for a haircut. Eventually, she risked it and called at the shop. I wonder if you have any aftershave lotion. It's a present for a friend of mine. Oh, plenty, miss. The present's for Mr. John Steed. You may know him. He's a friend of uh, Senor Jacino. Oh, how interesting. Yes. Mr. Steed's going away on a trip. This is a farewell present. Well, we all of us want to get away from it all at some time or another, don't we? Uh, you too, miss? Me too. Then I suggest you try the Eastern Galleries down the street. Plenty of interesting gifts for sale there. So they tell me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a short while after that, Mrs. Peel was being interviewed by Andrali. A woman? Our European agents should have warned us. I shall have to check with head office. Head office already know. They were my original contact. Even so, I ought to... I was told to expect an efficient operation. The minimum of fuss. If this is an example of your efficiency, then I shall leave and... No. Wait. I should have been warned, that's all. Very well. I'll see what can be arranged. Uh, but please to take a seat. I will see how soon transport can be arranged. It should not be long. Please, be seated. <laughs> John Steed, having been driven back to town by Manners, Tyson's servant, was allowed to take the blindfold from his eyes when he was once more in the familiar London streets. Steed headed for Mrs. Peel's apartment. Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel? 
Strange. Not here, and no note. Steed then drove as quickly as he could to the tower and checked with Mother in his headquarters. There, Steed. Mrs. Peel hasn't been in and she hasn't telephoned. You say that there's some sort of time machine in uh, Tyson's house? That's right. I experienced it myself. And uncanny it was, too. I went back to a sort of Georgian period. We all seem to be getting steeped in history. The atmosphere here is hardly one of mod cons. However, the raven pie makes up for quite a bit. Where would you stay for lunch, Steve? Well, I really should be getting after Mrs. Peel. And she should be reporting to me. Does it occur to you that she may be trying to follow your escape route also? Mm, possibly. Very unwise. You think so? Yes, of course. What about the two people in that car that forced Mrs. Peel off the road? They must be part of the Tyson setup. If they recognize her, Mrs. Peel will be in very grave danger. Yes, you're right there. I think I must get back to Tyson's house somehow. But you say you were blindfolded when you made the journey there and back. That's true, but I might be able to manage it. Take someone with you. Clapham will drive you. I'll arrange it. First thing after lunch, all right? If you insist. Yeah, I do. Take it easy, Steed. One mustn't lose one's head, <laughs> particularly in the tower. Thou hast a lean and hungry look, but lunch will be served at any minute. It's beef. Plenty of beef eaters around here, you know. <laughs> well, uh, a little pre lunch and gin, Steve? <laughs> Mrs. Peel wasn't lucky enough to have lunch that day. She was being driven, blindfolded, by manners along a route that Steed would have given a great deal to know. How much further do we have to travel? Well, not all that far. Trying to count the miles, are you? Memorize the way by the sounds you're hearing. Don't do any good. No one's ever found this place on their own. Oh, I see. And my host, when I get there, is Mr. Tyson. Isn't that correct? How did you know that? Oh, just a rumor I heard. I hope this won't be inconvenient to him. I wouldn't like to take up too much of his time. <laughs> He's got plenty of time to spare. That's the one thing you can be sure of. Plenty of time. Uh, come on, lady, this is it. This is where we get out. But where are we? You'll find out in time... <laughs> the Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen.